about what are you interested in and staying true to yourself, mm -hmm. uh, not trying to fit a mold. Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us on This Is Purdue, the official university podcast. You have a lot of ties to Purdue. You're an Indiana native. You went to Purdue. Your daughters both go to Purdue now. So tell us about your first memory growing up. You grew up here in Columbus. Um, what was your first memory of Purdue and why did you decide to come here? Yeah, well, as you noted, Kate, I have a lot of connections to Purdue today. I grew up in Columbus, Indiana. So being in the state of Indiana, of course, you know, Purdue growing up. I, I have to confess that I was actually an IU fan growing up. My, my parents were really into IU basketball. And it was really when I started thinking about engineering. I babysat for a Cummins engineer who went on to become our chief technical officer. Wow. Who encouraged me to think about engineering because I was good at math and science. And that really led me to think about Purdue. And if you live in the state of Indiana, right, what a great school to have available to you. And, you know, having heard so much about Purdue, I, I switched. So now I'm a loyal Boilermaker. Well, and you're, we're down south, right? So we're close to Yeah, Bloomington. exactly. Yeah. I could see that. Okay. So when you were a student at Purdue within the School of Mechanical Engineering, you had four internships with Cummins. This is unique because not many people go from an intern all the way to yeah. the highest level of, of CEO of Cummins. So tell us about that journey and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, I mean, it's been quite a journey from growing up here, you know, in yes. Columbus where Cummins is headquartered to interning here during my time at, in college and then now as CEO. And I would say Cummins is really a hire to develop culture. So we like to bring people in as interns um, and then continue to invest and give uh, our employees a chance to grow and evolve. And that's exactly what I've done in my career. So those internships really helped me start to see what engineering was all about. And, and while I started in engineering, I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do with that. I ended up going to graduate school and working for a fuel cell startup company for a few years because I love solving complex problems. And I realized that at that time that I wanted to do something that really mattered and made a difference to a customer and the environment. That's always been important to me. I'd had a great experience as an intern for Cummins with the work we were doing uh, and the culture of the company. So I came back and again, my career, people invested in me, helped me grow, kind of see and realize my potential. There's a lot of focus on how do we recognize and take advantage of diversity at Cummins. Um, and that led me to become chief technical officer of the company. Um, and then after a few years in that role, I started thinking about the business opportunity we face and uh, became CEO about 18 months ago. That's incredible. And and the person that you used to babysit for, what did he think about you taking over CTO? You know? Yeah. So, so, you know, it's it's, a, it's an amazing story. Quite um, proud of me, I would say, from, you know, growing up and encouraging me to consider engineering and really being a lifelong mentor and sponsor, which are so important to help you see, you know, see what you can become. And as a woman in engineering, kind of, you know, helping me see opportunities beyond what I might have envisioned were it not for him as a mentor for me. Absolutely. So when you think back about your experience at Purdue, how do you think that helped shape who you are today and, and just lead you on this incredible career path? Yeah, so, you know, Purdue is a incredible engineering school. Um, and I think that the combination of that engineering education and the internships to help me see what you could do with an engineering degree was very important in shaping me. That said, it's a lot more than about just getting a good education. And Purdue is really a whole experience, and that's what I enjoyed about it. It's all of the other clubs and activities that you can get involved in. It's about Division I sports. You know, the football team was not so good when I was there. I still went to football games, and the basketball team was really good, like yeah. it is uh, currently. Um, I, you know, time in Mackey Arena, you know, time with friends and, and groups and things that I did. Purdue also. I think really shaped me. And then last, I would say I met my husband, Jim, at Purdue. So I owe Purdue a lot uh, because of that and that, you know, meeting him and, you know, the person who's become a lifelong partner and supporter of me. That's amazing. So when you look back, do you have a favorite Purdue memory? You talked about athletics and experiencing that. Any favorite uh, classes, any mentors you want to discuss, and maybe one yeah. favorite memory? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, my favorite memory probably is a football game my sophomore year where my husband Jim and I had been friends since freshman year and it was kind of at that football game that we realized there was something more. So I have these really clear memories of that fall day, you know, and, and watching the game and Aww. and that change in the relationship. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed 
classes that were things like thermodynamics, uh, fluid dynamics, heat transfer, maybe why I ended up working for an engine uh, company. Eventually, I joke with my daughters about what are my favorite classes versus theirs, which are sometimes different. I think, though, that my favorite memory in mechanical engineering was my junior year when I took a, a research class. Okay. And it's a great opportunity that Purdue gives students to get involved in research. And uh, Professor Soika was my uh, uh, professor for that. He'd also been a teacher for one of my classes and just getting that hands-on experience in that research environment at Purdue. So, you know, we discussed your daughters there at Purdue. You're a really proud advocate for women pursuing engineering and STEM degrees and careers overall. Why do you feel that women uniquely bring something to the STEM fields that help move industries and innovations forward? Yeah, I mean, for me, when I look at the opportunities in the STEM field, when I look at the challenges that our society and our planet faces, I view it as we need everybody that has capability and potential in the space to recognize those opportunities and be given a chance to be a part of it. And unfortunately, because there aren't always role models of other women pursuing these fields, sometimes young girls, women don't consider it. When I went to Purdue, there were 10, maybe 15 percent women okay. in engineering. You know, it was pretty small. And so I got, I've gotten very used to you know, there and even in times in my career of looking around and just not seeing other women. And so it is one of the reasons I'm really passionate about that investment and helping young girls and helping women see the opportunities and grow in these STEM fields and taking advantage of the opportunities that will then ultimately help companies like Cummins, you know, and the society more broadly really be successful. What's your favorite advice to give, you know, these young girls and women pursuing these journeys and even with your own daughters, yeah. what, what kind of things do you tell them to kind of overcome maybe some of these challenges? Yeah, well, the, you know, the reality is that when you look around, sometimes there's a there's a mixture of can I do it because I don't see anybody that looks like me, right? And also trying to fit into a certain mold that you mm -hmm. might see others. So with my own daughters, I've always encouraged them to pursue what they're passionate about and you know makes them happy. My husband and I are both very happy, of course, that they're studying engineering like yeah. we did at Purdue. That's fantastic. I by no means was saying, hey, you have to study engineering at Purdue. It's about what are you interested in and staying true to yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, not trying to fit a mold that others might expect you to do and the peer pressure that can exist in our society. And then, you know, learn and grow from challenges and mistakes that we all have and use that to help you be a better person um, and, and be, you know, do more in your life. And I think that advice is very similar to young girls is really understand yourself and don't be afraid to do something new or different, to believe in yourself while you also surround yourself and use people that understand and care about you to also help you think about what you can do. And that has been my exact experience. I think because of my um, upbringing, I had a you know, very strong supportive mother. I had a lot of belief in myself. Mm -hmm. And I had people like John Wall, who I talked about, like my husband, that encouraged me right, to, to think big about what I can do. And so I just think there's so much opportunity if young girls can find those two things and then pay it forward to others as they, they find their own success. Absolutely. Now, are they both studying mechanical engineering? Much to my, much to my husband's dismay because he's a computer and electrical engineer okay. from Purdue. They are both studying mechanical engineering. They're senior and sophomore there oh, this year. Amazing. Yeah. That is so fun to see it through their eyes, right? You, can, you and your husband can kind of repeat your experiences exactly. through your daughters. So you've put more than two decades of work toward a greener, more sustainable future. You're focusing on clean energy solutions, reducing environmental impacts, while improving that performance of diesel engines. And in 2022, you formally launched Destination Zero. Okay. Tell us a little bit about that strategy and why it's so important. Yeah, so you know, Cummins uh, is a power solutions provider. Our history is in diesel engines. We're 104 years old. Um, and we're investing in a range of different power solutions today that will meet our customers' needs now and as they evolve for the future in a way that allows our industry to decarbonize. And that's what our Destination Zero strategy is all about. It's about advancing solutions that are broadly available and viable today because our customers also serve applications at the heart of the economy. 
school buses that are taking our kids to school every day, right. trucks and um, trains that are moving goods, uh, backup power generation for critical applications like hospitals or you know fun applications like Statue of Liberty. And so, um, you know, the work matters. In it, and we contribute to global CO2 emissions, and so decarbonizing matters. This is one of the big reasons I became CEO, is that there's a tremendous opportunity for Cummins to grow um, and continue to make a positive difference in powering a more prosperous world. And of course, there's still a long way to go, right? But um, what do you believe is the biggest obstacle standing between you and Destination Zero right now? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's easy to talk about the technology transition that needs to happen. There's it's very difficult to replace a diesel engine, right? Diesel engine in terms of power density and durability and meeting these very demanding applications is, is really good and we've refined it over time. Um, and so finding alternate solutions that can serve that customer need and also build out the infrastructure because there's typically different fuels or charging that's required also takes takes time. And so partnerships become really important. And that's a strength that Cummins has had of partnering, you know, with um, with our customers, with others in our industry, with the government, and helping define regulations and standards and how this and policies and how these evolve for the future. On my first week as CEO, I was advocating for some of the climate change provisions that are in the, the IRA, as an example, because this is going to be a complicated journey and it's an important one because those customers are serving important applications today and we need to protect our planet for the future. Absolutely. So Cummins was started in 1919. It's over 100 years old now. What do you hope that your legacy will be at Cummins? You must have immense you know, pride leading this 100-year-old brand. Yeah, yeah. It, I do have immense pride to the company, to what we represent to our Destination Zero strategy and what is happening um, in that, and also the culture of the company. And so for me, you know, as CEO, I want my legacy to be about how we evolve the company for the future. And when I say that, I mean the products and the technologies and how we're serving our customers' needs, that we're evolving what we do, our people, right? And how we're investing in the skills and in the capability and ensuring all of our employees have an opportunity to reach their full potential and the impact that we then have, you know, on all of our, our stakeholders and uh, in, the, in our business. The building is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> and the indie location is gorgeous. So I think I can, it, it feels like there's a good culture just when I walk in, so. Yeah, it's a very, you know, it's about innovation and it's about caring and it's about working together to power a more prosperous world and make a difference. Sure. So why are you proud to be a Boilermaker? Yeah, I think, you know, Purdue is a, a large school. I know President Chang said, talks about pinnacle of excellence at scale, right? It's a large school and it's also one that creates a lot of loyalty and connection with people. And so you go out into the world from Purdue University with this network of people that you um, cross paths with wherever you go. And of course, I travel around the world as a part of my job and you meet Boilermakers everywhere. And so it builds that really special connection. That connection for me has deepened with time because of two daughters yep. that are now there that you know provides me an opportunity to continue to connect with the school. And we hire a lot of people from Purdue. We do research work with Purdue. And so I've just you know continued to, to strengthen that Boilermaker passion and connection in my life. We've had a lot of guests say they're traveling to all different countries. They're wearing Purdue gear and they hear the boiler up. And yeah, exactly. In Japan or, you know, it's... Exactly. So um, do you still keep involved with athletics? Are you and your family watching the basketball Well, team? yes, I, I, I watch games for sure. I try to make it to at least one football game and one basketball game a year and definitely watch them on TV when I'm not able to do that. Yes, awesome. And my daughter actually runs for the Purdue cross country and track team. Oh, wow. So I've been to a few of those events as well. That's impressive. Engineering and yeah. an athletic. Wow. What would you say your next giant leap is personally or professionally? Well, you know, I think professionally I talked about this destination zero strategy and the change that's happening at Cummins and really how we continue to transition and reposition Cummins for the future. Uh, so that really is the giant 
leap for me. It's going to be a big change. As I said, 104-year-old company that has its roots in diesel engines. And we have changed and transformed the company over time. We've embraced the need for change and used that to drive innovation. Most of us that are engineers step up when presented with a challenge, and that's really how I think about what's ahead for us here at Cummins. For me personally, I'm already at the empty nest stage, you know, but my daughters are going to begin their own careers, and so I look forward to you know moving into that phase of my personal life. Any tips on Boilermakers right now who are listening, who are interested in interning, or maybe it's been their goal to come here and work for Cummins? Yeah, well, I, we are a hire to develop culture, culture. We love hiring interns. There's a variety of opportunities here at Cummins. It's an amazing place to work. I encourage you to, while you're an intern, it's just a great time to experience different cultures of different companies and different types of work. Yeah. Um, and then certainly in your career at Cummins, there's so many different things that you can do with that engineering degree. Well, we can't thank you enough for joining us. Did I miss anything? Is there anything else you want to tell our listeners or our viewers? So just one other little interesting note about Cummins. So we've had a long focus on sustainability. I talked about in our products and the work that we've, we're doing to reduce CO2 emissions. Uh, prior to that, and for much of my career, we were focused on criteria pollutants. And we think about the other aspects of our business as well. Our first environmental sustainability plan, we actually launched at Purdue University. We're now on our second one, Planet 2050. So as I said, this is a long commitment that Cummins has had, but Purdue has a connection in that commitment to sustainability for us. That's incredible. Your alma mater, you're partnering with all the time. Exactly. <laughs> That's incredible. Anything else you want to share? No, thanks so much for, for taking time to talk to me today. Absolutely. Thank you, Jennifer. Mm -hmm.